Welcome back to the latest edition of Conference Chatter TV. My name is Eric Sorrentino. I'm the KUSports.com Big 12 blogger, and we're back recording today in Kansas, back in Lawrence on the west part of town at Southwest Junior High, here recording on site to reflect on the 12th week of action in the Big 12 this college football season, where there was one big surprise. I went 5-1 and one on the week to improve my record to 71-20, and 20, picking at a 78% accuracy, right? Not too bad. But the one that I missed, and I don't think anybody saw this coming in Week 12, was Texas Tech 41, Oklahoma 13. That was a game that I did not see coming, particularly Texas Tech winning by that huge a margin. It just wasn't even close. And it's the most lopsided win ever for the Red Raiders over the Sooners. Uh, Baron Batch, the Texas Tech running back, had a huge game, 136 yards rushing and two scores. Then he had seven catches for 68 yards. And he's a guy that's quietly rushed for 12 touchdowns on the year. Texas Tech has not really been able to run the football, but when they're in the red zone, Batch has really uh, come up big and converted those chances into scores. And now it looks like Taylor Potts for Texas Tech will be their quarterback going forward here. 388 yards, two touchdowns against OU. And it was really him uh, and Steven Sheffield kind of going back and forth for Texas Tech for the last few games. But it really uh, looks like now that Potts is, is Mike Leach's guy. The most surprising aspect to, of this game to me was the difference in the run games of Texas Tech and Oklahoma. Texas Tech had 161 rushing yards compared to OU's 48. And it's really amazing to think about when, you know, entering this game, Texas Tech was 117th out of 120 FBS teams in rushing versus an OU offense that had Chris Brown and DeMarco Murray back from last year, two guys that each rushed for 1,000 yards last year. But it didn't necessarily go that way. Texas Tech really outplayed OU in the running game, and that's really how important the offensive line is. You had Oklahoma, who, who lost its main components from, the, from a, an unbelievable offensive line last year, and then they've had several more key injuries on the O-line this year. It's amazing to think that two guys as talented as uh, Brown and Murray, you know, not nearly running with as much success as they had last year. And that's a credit to the OU offensive line from last year um, and just how good they were. Uh, it's not the same this year, and, and Brown and Murray don't have nearly as many running lanes as they did. With the victory, uh, Texas Tech coach Mike Leach picked up win number 83, passing Spike Dykes for the winningest coach in Tech history. And now OU, at 6-5, and five, this is the most losses for the Sooners since 1999. A very, very surprising loss for, for OU and 41-13 uh, uh, Tech. What more can you say there? Let's move on to some other ones. I, I predicted the rest of the games correct here, the, the five other ones that took place in the Big 12. Let's go to Nebraska 17 and K-State 3. With the victory, the Huskers now will represent the North in the Big 12 championship game. They will face Texas. And after two straight home losses earlier in this year, Nebraska has now won four straight. They're easily the best team in the North. It's mostly because of their defense, which held K-State scoreless after the opening drive. An unbelievable defense that NU is sporting this year. Zach Lee taking mostly every snap now for the Huskers. I was kind of thinking about Zach Lee and what he has to do for Nebraska, and really, he just has to be like Trent Dilfer, you know, thinking about it. Back to when Dilfer played for the Baltimore Ravens and they went to the Super Bowl, all he did was manage the game, don't turn it over, and, you know, just control the offense. Lee, he did that this last week. 13 of 19, 166 yards, a touchdown. He had an interception as well, but, he, you know, overall he played, you know, effectively. And if he does that, Nebraska will be in every game it plays the rest of the year, including the Big 12 championship game against Texas. I don't think Nebraska is going to get blown out of this game with, with, with a defense like that. You know, it's just unbelievable. They're now third in the country, uh, Nebraska, in scoring defense. 10.27 points allowed per game. The only defenses that rank better than that right now, Florida and Alabama. Nebraska's defense, um, very, very, uh, they, they've done it all year. Uh, this is a defense that, that we knew was unbelievable, and, you know, I think for that reason they'll, they'll be in every game they play, um, including the game against Texas. Next, we had Oklahoma State 31 and Colorado 28. This was a game that took place on Thursday in Stillwater. 
Oklahoma State, how about this? A big lift from sophomore quarterback Brandon Whedon, who entered the season as the Cowboys' third-string quarterback behind Zach Robinson and Alex Kate. The circumstances for this one was Robinson missed the game because of the concussion he suffered. So the Cowboys started Alex Kate, and he was just dreadful. 0 of 9 with an interception. Mike Gundy could not continue playing him, so what did he do? He turned to Whedon who turned around and had an unbelievable game. 10 of 15, 168 yards, two touchdowns. Unbelievable lift. Um, and Robinson should be back for Oklahoma State by next weekend. That, of course, the Bedlam game at Oklahoma. Huge game. Oklahoma State needs a victory in that if they want to stay alive for a BCS at-large invitation. That's going to be a tough task going down to Norman where it's nearly impossible to win, but Oklahoma State could still be in the conversation for an at-large invitation. And this is a good time for Oklahoma State to play OU because OU is certainly down right now. So it will be a good one next week. Next game we had from the weekend was Texas 51, Kansas 20. Not really that much of a surprise. Colt McCoy on fire, 32 of 41, 396 yards, four scores. He's quietly entering his name back into the Heisman race. If he finishes... The year pretty strong these next two weeks against A&M and then in the Big 12 title game against Nebraska, he could be back in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy. Uh, over on the Kansas side, it's still kind of a waiting game on the fate of KU coach Mark Mangino, whose Jayhawks lost their sixth straight game this weekend. It's really now up to the Missouri game at Arrowhead to, uh, to see if KU will be bowl eligible. And, you know, whether Mangino is on the sidelines for that game remains in question. We'll see how that unfolds this week. The next game after that was Missouri 34, Iowa State 24, Denario Alexander. I talked about this guy last week on the blog. He just continues to go crazy. Uh, 11 receptions, 173 yards, and a touchdown for Missouri. And when they have, you know, Gabbert and Alexander clicking, um, they're – you know, that's obviously step one, but then they rushed the ball effectively, too, with Derek Washington and Devin Moore, and the Missouri defense played well also, picking off Austin Arnaud twice, and when all those components are working together for Missouri, they are very tough to beat. The Tigers have quietly won three of four. They're seven and four on the season, and depending on what happens at Arrowhead, I mean, seven and five or eight and four, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty darn good. The, the Missouri lost their first couple games this conference season, and they've really played well toward the end of the year here. Final game was A&M 38, Baylor 3. Texas A&M now bowl eligible thanks to a season-high 375 rushing yards. Baylor dreadful against the run, and, and A&M really took advantage by that. A&M has been inconsistent all year, but this was a game at home that they easily won. It wasn't even close defeating Baylor, and now Mike Sherman's squad will be eligible to play in a bowl game. So I think that'll take, that takes care of it, guys, from Week 12 action around the Big 12.